Who is actually better and who would win? That's what we're looking to find out in this video. We'll compare the Netherlands to Belgium and see who's actually the superior of the two. But before we start actually comparing, let's go over the ground rules for this competition. We have six different categories in which we'll give each country a score from 1 to 10 points. Then, when we have looked at all categories, we count the points together and see who's the winner. And for each and every one of you who might take this as a hard reality, this is just for fun and entertainment. So don't choke on your waffles or break an ankle in your wooden clogs if you get too frustrated about the results, okay? Good. Now with that out of the way, let's see who is actually the boss country of Belgium and the Netherlands. Let's start with something very important. The geographic landscape. After all, this plays a significant role in defining a country's identity. First up, the Netherlands. Part of the Low Countries and part of it for a reason. This place is flat as a bank cake and a big chunk of the country is actually located under sea level, believe it or not. This definitely would have been a problem for most countries, but not for the Dutch, who over time become the world leaders in water management. They've built canals and dikes all over the country, which now is a huge part of the landscape and quite frankly looks beautiful, especially in the cities where the canals flow through them, creating a very Dutch feeling. And while it's flat, the country's tulip fields kind of saves the landscape from being very plain and boring as these fields look like splashes of paint all over the countryside and truly makes it a sight worth seeing. But on the downside, the Netherlands is still flat. And that can be, well, boring. Have you ever tried to hike in this country? Well, it's more like a long walk than a hike, since there's basically no ups and downs here. Also due to Netherlands' high population density, finding truly untouched wilderness can be tough. For the good, the bad and the pancake flat, the Netherlands receives 7 points in this category. Moving down over to Belgium's landscape, and we first encounter the northern region of Belgium called Flanders. The landscape here is pretty similar to that in the Netherlands, flat as a tabletop, with cities and towns dotting the landscape. But with Belgium, the further south you go, the more interesting it gets. The ground starts rising, the greenery gets thicker, and all of a sudden you're in Wallonia, with the hills rolling out in front of you. And once you hit the Ardennes, you're in a completely different world from where we started. Now we see dense forests, winding rivers, sleepy villages and castles that make this kind of a magical place, straight out of a fairy tale. And while that sounds pretty awesome, this place gets pretty gloomy and grey when the weather's not great, which sadly is quite often. So for Belgium's diversity and charm, we're giving Belgium 7.5 points here. Now let's talk about the bread and butter of all countries, literally, the economy. Both the Netherlands and Belgium have pretty strong economies, but in different ways. The Netherlands are serious about their business. The Dutch economy is like a well-oiled bicycle, smooth, efficient and eco-friendly. They are the world's second largest exporter of goods, which is pretty impressive for a country smaller than the state of West Virginia. Also their port of Rotterdam is the biggest in Europe, where ships bigger than skyscrapers sail in and out each day, carrying all sorts of goods. But it's not all roses, or maybe I should say tulips. The Netherlands is also known for its high cost of living, eating out can burn a hole in your pocket and don't even get me started on housing prices. It's like the market decided to take a roller coaster ride upwards. Also, they have one of the highest tax rates in the world. In fact, it's so high you might need a ladder to see the top. And yes, I know a few Scandinavians are looking at me right now saying, yeah, I'd be happy to pay that low personal tax. But come on, it's still high. All in all, this brings the Netherlands to 8.5 in the economy category. Belgium, on the other hand, is like that quiet kid in class who always gets good grades. They've got a robust and diversified economy, the country is a major player in the global diamond trade and Antwerp is the world's leading diamond city. Also, their beer? Gold standard. Quite literally, they make a good chunk of money from it. The biggest chunk though comes from the export of various chemicals. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows here either. Belgium is split between the Dutch-speaking Flemish community, which is generally richer and more economically active, and the French-speaking Walloons, which traditionally has had higher unemployment rates. This divide has caused some economic tensions in the past, although the GDP divide isn't that big at present time. Plus, Belgium also has high taxes, though they offer a good range of public service for it. So it's like paying for a fancy meal, it's pricey, but at least you're getting something delicious. Given the highs and lows, Belgium scores an 8 in the economy category. Now let's talk about something we often take for granted until it's gone. Infrastructure. You know, the roads, the bridges, the public transport, all the stuff that makes a country tick like a well-oiled machine. Let's start in Belgium. When it comes to infrastructure, Belgium is a bit of a mixed bag. 
Their train network is pretty extensive and punctual, which is great. It's also one of the densest railway networks in the world. Also, the country is known for its extensive network of motorways, which are, fun fact, so brightly lit you can see them from space. The port of Antwerp is a significant logistic hub and is the second largest in Europe, only beat by one other port, which ironically is located in the Netherlands and that we mentioned before, the port of Rotterdam. Brussels is considered the capital of the European Union, so connectivity here is great, especially by air. But then there's the traffic here. Ever been stuck in a traffic jam so long you consider setting up camp right there on the highway? Well, that's a regular Tuesday in Brussels. The city is notorious for its traffic problems, so for its bright highways but sometimes congested byways, we're giving Belgium a 7.5 in the infrastructure category. So the Netherlands. When it comes to infrastructure, the Dutch are pretty much on top of their game. Ever heard of Dutch efficiency? Well, their infrastructure is a perfect example. With an extensive network of highways, railways and waterways, getting around is a breeze. But what really sets the Netherlands apart is their love affair with bicycles. The country is crisscrossed with bike lanes and the infrastructure is incredibly bike friendly. They even have bicycle parking garages. Can you believe that? But let's face it, it's not all smooth cycling in the Netherlands. The public transport system, while efficient, can be a bit on the pricey side. And anyone who's tried driving in Amsterdam knows that the city can sometimes feel like a maze, with all the canals and narrow streets. Also, if you thought traffic jams were exclusive to cars, wait until you see a Dutch bike lane during rush hour. So for the love of bikes, great planning and the powerhouse port, the Netherlands gets an 8.5 for infrastructure. As we drive along these well-laid roads, let's explore the tourism potential of the two nations. First of all, Europe is a treasure trove of tourist destinations, and the Netherlands and Belgium are two jewels in its crown. The Netherlands is known worldwide for its tulip fields, windmills, cheese markets and its vibrant capital Amsterdam. Each year millions of tourists flock to the Kok and Hof Gardens to witness a spectacular sight of millions of tulips in bloom. In Amsterdam, tourists are enchanted by the historical charm of its canals, the touching Anne Frank House and the rich collection of art at the Van Gogh Museum and Rijksmuseum. The country's efforts to preserve and showcase its rich maritime history also adds to its allure, with destinations such as the historic port of Rotterdam and the maritime museum in Amsterdam. This blend of nature, history and culture gives the Netherlands a solid score of 7 in the tourism category. Cross the border into Belgium and you find a country teeming with equally stunning attractions. But Belgium might not be the first country you think of when you think of tourism. But this country actually has numerous of interesting places to visit. With well-preserved medieval towns such as Bruges, often referred to as the Venice of the North, it's renowned for its picturesque canals and historic buildings. In Brussels, the grandeur of the Grand Palace and the futuristic Atomium are must-visit landmarks. And don't forget about the magnificent castles scattered throughout the country, such as Gravenstein in Ghent or the Chateau de Bouillon in Wallonia. The numerous World War I and II memorials, such as the Menin Gate and the Bastogne War Museum, provide some insights into Belgium's war-ridden past. Also, let's not forget about Waterloo, the famous battleground here where Napoleon were defeated. I'm sticking my head out here and naming Belgium the winner with 7.5 points. As there's simply so many things to see all over the country. And as an extra nugget of information in the tourism section, if you can, make sure to visit the city of Barley. This is a spectacular place that sits on the border between the Netherlands and Belgium and is one of the strangest borders in the world, with people having their living room in one country and a kitchen in another. And I actually made a video about this place, which you can find at the link at the top right or in the description. For me and a lot of other people, tourism is also eating and trying various kinds of food. So let's see how these countries score in the food section. Food is basically the window to a country's soul. Someone please put that on a t-shirt and I'll buy it straight away. Both these countries have some distinct and special offerings, although I find a clear winner here. I mean, let's be honest, Dutch cuisine isn't usually what makes foodies heart beat faster. But with that said, there are some gems here that is a must try for pretty much anyone. And to start with the obvious, cheese. These people know cheese, and who doesn't love cheese? Gouda, Edam and Mastam. The Dutch are major players in the global cheese market, and they should be. This stuff is amazing. Then foods such as Stroop waffles and the Dutch pancakes called Pannenkoeken are some nice foods on the Swedish side. And a dish called Stampot, which is mashed potatoes and veggies mixed together, is also pretty good if you're in for something a bit heavier. All in all, with the cheese as the savior here, we hand Netherlands 6 points for food. Belgium, on the other hand, is a foodist paradise. Maybe not the absolute gastronomic experience, but man, do they have some tasty things here. Belgian chocolate is a delight that needs no introduction. 
with hundreds of chocolate manufacturers and a history of chocolate making that goes back centuries, Belgium scores high on the sweet index. Add to this the Belgian waffles, which have gained international fame, and you have a sugar-coated match made in heaven. And who could forget Belgian fries? Contrary to popular belief, fries are actually a Belgian creation, and the country is proud of its fries. If that wasn't enough, Belgium is known as a brewing paradise, with over 1500 different types of beers. I'm giving Belgium a 7 in this category, as they have some incredible tasty treats, but actual food dishes isn't anything super impressive. So from filling our stomachs, let's now fill our minds with some history and culture. European history is just fascinating, and both the Netherlands and Belgium have their unique threads in it. The Dutch Golden Age in the 17th century was a period of immense wealth and culture achievement. The Dutch art from this period, including works by masters like Rembrandt, is celebrated worldwide. The Netherlands is also known for its liberal values, tolerance and freedom, which has shaped its modern cultural identity. Its vibrant traditions like King's Day, the Sinterklaas Festival and its passion for cycling adds to its cultural richness. However, their history is not all positive. The Dutch has a long history of colonialism, particularly in countries like Indonesia and South Africa, which has left a stain on their history. But the Dutch have pretty much been everywhere during its history, and has been a serious player in discovery of the world. All in all, Dutch impressive history with a few dark clouds, together with their interest in culture, gets them an 8 in this category. Heading over to Belgium and its history is like a thrilling roller coaster ride. The country's strategic location has made it a crossroad of cultures and influences. The region has witnessed important historical events, from Roman times through Middle Ages to the two world wars. Belgium has been a battleground for Europe's power and has therefore earned the nickname Battlefield of Europe. Its cultural identity is shaped by the Dutch-speaking Flemish community in the north and the French-speaking Walloon community in the south, each with its unique traditions and heritage. Belgium's historical cities are filled with architectural marvels, and the country has made significant contributions to the world of art. But Belgium's history also has a dark side, with a period of colonial rule, notably in Congo, which was marked by brutality and exploitation. The complex blend of history and culture scores Belgium a 7. Alright, so let's count the points together. But before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor for making this video possible. As someone who loves to travel and explore new cultures, I get super annoyed when I have to confirm my accounts again and again. Basically, things like my email account gets flagged due to location changes as it thinks I'm someone else trying to access my stuff. I mean, I get it, but it's still pretty annoying. Fortunately for me, Surfshark VPN has provided me with an easy solution. With just two clicks, I can change my virtual location to my home country. Like, really, it's two clicks. The interface is super simple and you just press the buttons. Oh, and changing location like that also allows me to watch the entire Netflix library. By connecting to servers in different countries, I can watch any TV show or movie they have. But it's more than just a VPN. They also has these great features that help me monitoring my data and alert for breaches, as well as helping me keep my devices virus free. Now, if you want to try Surfshark, by using the link in my description, you get an 83% discount and 3 months of free use. That's 3 months of free use. And with a single account, you can protect an unlimited number of devices. So whether you're planning your next trip or simply want a smooth online experience, give Surfshark VPN a try. Now let's get back to the video. Geographic landscape, economy, infrastructure, tourism, food, and history and culture. As you can see, this matchup is incredibly close when we look at these categories. And with a small margin, Netherlands came out on top. So for all you Dutch people watching this, you can proudly wave your flag today as the superior country. It would kind of be interesting to see how the scores would change if we add a couple other categories as well, but that might be for another video. Let's hope this video doesn't cause any diplomatic incidents and that the residents of Barley still can function together. If you want us to compare some other countries, let us know in the comments. And if you want us to do more categories between these two, let me know about that as well. For now, go explore these countries more in detail by clicking one of the videos on your screen right now.